All right, so you're not in the top tier. But you are in the upper, upper middle tier, which means 70% of the time you're in the playoffs. Where do I come up with those statistics? Well, it's really hard statistical knowledge and number crunching, meaning that I really kind of just make them up. Anyhow, top middle tier, third tier if you or second tier if you will. Um, the top of this tier is a surprise team that I didn't even think. And then when I was really going through all the rosters and kind of examining everything, um, <clears throat> I feel this team is going to be crazy consistent, um, which I. I, I value. I, I think they're going to get a lot of wins because of the consistency while others go up and down. Um, I like some of the the chances they took and I like some of the players that they took that uh, most wouldn't think of are as marquee, but they're, they're definitely top flight in, in a lot of respects. Um, that team, of course, is I am the wiener. I know. <laughs> I'm as surprised as you. Um, the newly fatherfied um, Scott and weak team name with I am the wiener. I know. He thinks it's strong. Please leave your comments in the comment section and let him know how weak the team is. In fact, I will make that the new poll of the week. Is I am the wiener the weakest name in, in, in the league. I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, it, at least he... Anyhow, let's get into it. Um, quarterback Cam Newton, number one last year. I think he gave up too much with that fourth round pick. However, it wouldn't have been so bad if he didn't have like the number one fourth, round, fourth rounder, right? So, because of all that, blah, 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 that doesn't matter. Cam Newton, quarterback... He'll still be in the top three. Is it going to be as good as last year? Probably not. I don't think, at least fantasy-wise. He's still going to be in the top three. Um, Lamar Miller from Houston. Just coming from Miami, going to Houston. He was top ten last year. I expect him to be top ten this year, which makes him a good uh, running back number one. And then Jeremy Langford, which is his running back number two. He finished just outside RB2 range at number 22. I expect him to get fully entrenched in that RB2 good range at around 14 or 15. Gives a lot of upside. Um, I feel he's going to share a, a lot less carries. And that, that Bears offense really opens up. Plus, he can catch the ball out of the backfield, which um, that coordinator very much values. Um, so he'll play all three downs. His flex spot, which I absolutely adore as a flex spot, is Michael Crabtree, the number two receiver in Oakland in that pass-happy offense with Derek Carr, who's only getting better. Who would have thought that, right? Um, Derek, uh, Crabtree was still the 21st receiver last year. 21st best receiver last year. Even if he stays exactly like that in a flex that's amazing. Great, great pickup. T.Y. Hilton was down last year. He was 22, meaning that he was ranked below Crabtree last year. But luck is going to be back most of the year. I expect Hilton to climb into the top 10 this year. Um, Jeremy Macklin, KC, I was on the fence with him. Um, but you did see him get into the end zone a little bit more than what most people thought at the beginning of the season with Alex Smith. Um, and as Alex becomes more and more comfortable with Macklin, look for Smith to use Macklin like he used Crabtree, just as a safety blanket. doesn't matter how many mistakes uh, Smith throws to him. It just matters on how many times he catches and how many red zone targets he gets. I don't think he's still going to get as much as Kels, but... Oh, wait. Kels is your tight end. Either way, both red zone options through the air, you have. Um, so Macklin was top 20 last year. He'll be top 20 again. So I don't think he's got any amazing receivers, but he's solid. He's got three number two receivers, and all that equals out to a pretty damn good core. Um, his bench, Melvin Gordon, Garriott Blunt, Isaiah Crowell, Michael Thomas, Devontae Booker, uh, Sanu, and Pierre Garçon. I like Pierre Garçon. I like LeGarrette Blunt. We'll see how, and he doesn't have to play LeGarrette Blunt right away. He'll see the carries. Um, and then also Melvin Gordon, which I'm not a big fan of. 
However, he'll probably get a little bit more carries than he did last year. All in all, bench is not great, but it is solid enough if somebody goes down. Bottom line, consistency wins in this one, and I definitely think I'm the wiener as consistency. I, I didn't think it was going to happen. Uh, I mean, I just really didn't. Um, next team in the, in the, in the second tier um, I rate as the number four team. I mean, that I do believe you're going to make the playoffs is Manny Inception. I think he gave away too much. He, th- he feels like it was for free. It wasn't for free, um, even though you had an extra fifth-round draft pick. Um, it's an extra fifth-round draft pick. And it, either way, I think you've got a lot of highs, a lot of lows on this team. Um, Eli Manning right now is your starting quarterback because you have Tom Brady waiting in the wings. Um, Eli's a turnover machine. I know some people that are very high with him. Last year, he wasn't even in the top 10, meaning that he shouldn't be a starter. Um, I think there was a lot more options out there when you got Eli. I think there's still options out there better than Eli Manning. Um, We'll see if I'm wrong. I know you're a homer. That's cool and everything. And you'll get that double-double with Odell Beckham when he scores, which that's a, that's a strong idea. Um, Mark Ingram from New Orleans. I still don't love a running back on a pass-happy team. I get that he gets the goal line carries. Um, but as your number one running back, because you kept him, um, being a guy who's out of top ten, uh, I'm not a big fan of. You jumped up to get Ezekiel Elliott. Like that pick. Um, you think a young guy going in uh, is great, keeper league, everything like that. Um, my issue is Zeke's already been kind of getting in trouble. And as much as I love Zeke, being an Ohio State fan, I'm a little bit worried about him. Also, I think it actually hurts Zeke more than it hurts Des Bryant with Romo being out. I think they're able to stack the box um, eight um Put eight in the box more, which just gives more one-on-one to Dez. Um, but I think hurts Zeke. Either way, I do believe Zeke will be a top 15 back. I do think that he'll be top 10. Um, I just don't think it's enough to make up for your one, two, three in the very beginning. Then you have Spencer Ware, who is not even close to a great flex. He's borderline a flex in a 12-team league, let alone a 10-team league. It's a big flyer that you're taking on, Spencer Ware. I get that because of the problems with Jamal Charles. Um, But if Ware becomes the starter, I definitely think it's going to be even more of a shared carry than it is now. Odell Beckham. Your number uh, was the number three receiver last year. I saw him going number one in drafts, which I just don't understand considering like the gap between him and like an Antonio Brown. Um, I guess it's just the, the sexy factor and ESPN and the East Coast stuff. Um, he's a solid receiver. He'll be top five, I would assume, again. Um, which doesn't make up for your number two being Evans. You have, like, like I was saying, you have a lot of ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. Um, you have high and then low, like where you're great value and then your other person is definitely lower value for that position. Uh, you have Carlos Hyde sitting on the bench for the, the, the starter for the San Francisco Giants, or San Francisco Giants, San Francisco 49ers, sorry, still in Cubs mode. Um, I would actually probably start him over Spencer Ware. Um, I'm a 49er fan, but I don't own any 49ers on my fantasy team, so that one's not homerism, um, like some people are homerism with fantasy football. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, um, I would probably definitely you know, spend my time on him. I think I know a little bit more about him than I do about Spencer Ware um, and where they're at in, in uh, percentage carries. For your bench, it's actually pretty strong. Carlos Hyde, Keenan Allen... Um, Brady obviously will be your starter going forward, I would hope, once his suspension comes out. John Brown, which I love. Christian Michael, um, which you're hoping will still carry his way from Rawls. Um, I, I, you got another defense, which I'm not crazy about having two defenses on the thing, but that, that's fine. And then Justin Forsett. Uh, Michaels, John Brown, Brady, Keenan Allen, Hyde, one of the strongest benches. Um, I just think you're going to have to be guessing right a lot. But either way, you have a lot of strong points. That's why you're the number four team and in the upper middle tier. Um, As for the last team 
in this tier. I know I have three three um, people in this tier. Usually I don't have as many. However, coming in right out of the playoffs, if all my predictions come correct, is the reigning, defending, undisputed champion, Sexy Time Explosion. I think he was very foolish with uh, trading away from that four spot and getting Robinson if he wanted that receiver. He was a big steal in that draft. Uh, he should never have been out there being uh, the number one or a top 15 all, all overall pick let alone like a top five receiver. He should never have been in this draft. He should have been kept. Um, you should have you should have got him. You should have stayed put. I get the the two um, getting the two picks because of it. Uh, I just don't think you did enough with it to be honest. Um, your team, Tyrod Taylor, Adrian Peterson, you got you can't undervalue him. Again, he would still be my number one pick if I was picking for only one year. Um, Doug Martin, Golden Tate, Brandon Marshall, Sammy Watkins, Zach Ertz. Uh, Brandon Marshall, he was number four receiver last year, but he's not going to be this year. He'll be outside the top 10. I expect him to be outside the top 15. Um, so you have Sammy Watkins, who was number 15 last year. I think he's going to get better. I think he's going to be, but I, I think he's still going to end up in that 10 to 15 range, which isn't going to do enough for you. Golden Tate I actually really like. I think he's very strong in the, your flex position, um, especially with the weak pass off, uh, pass defenses in that league. Um, I think he's going to get better and better. He got 111 points that last year. He'll get about like 130 this year, um, which is about a one and a half points more a game. That's, that's a big average. And then Muscle Hamster, uh, the Doug Martin Tampa. Man, he's just... So, you just don't know. He has a great year, then he disappears for a few. He has a great year, then he, I think he's going to disappear again. Um, he was number three running back last year, surprisingly enough. But uh, I definitely think Doug Martin drops out of the top ten. Um, your bench, Corey Coleman, Blake Borders, which I'm surprised you're not starting against Green Bay. But we'll get into that into the, the matchups that will be coming later. But um, Sterling Shepard, Jack McKinnon, Charles Sims, Tevin Coleman, and Dante Moncrief. I actually like Moncrief, which was one of your last picks, better than most. You have a shaky, shaky team. A lot of things would have to go right. Um, I think it was smart to pick up Tyrod Taylor. However, I don't think you can start him over Blake Borderles. I mean, Blake Borderles was a top five quarterback, and I don't know if you know you have a problem because it's still Jacksonville, but. Um, it's a really weak division, really, really weak division, and they do love to throw the ball with Bortles. Um, either way, you still made it into the top tier because you had enough bright spots and enough potential to garner um, the respect there. And as defending champion, i got to give you a little bit of love. Either way, good luck. I think you're going to need it, but right now, top middle tier. Good job, gentlemen. Stay tuned. We'll see the bottom dwellers next.